Hey, it's uh, Tim Patterson over at Trade Show Guy Blog. This is Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. And boy, it has been a hot minute since I've done one of these shows. And I haven't done one of these actually uh, since last fall. I, I had to take some time off. I just felt like I needed it. Uh, things got busy and my focus was elsewhere. And that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. So um, I, I just got back. It's been about a week from the time this gets published from uh, Anaheim Natural Products Expo West 2022. Uh, it was interesting show. You know, I was there nine days helping set up uh, two booths and do the dismantle of uh, two great clients, Bob's Red Mill and Mountain Rose Herbs. And uh, the, the booth for Bob's has been there for 10 years. Uh, it's looking pretty good still. And uh, the brand new booth we did for Mountain Rose Herbs was a 20 by 30 uh, Island Custom, which uh, actually turned out really well. I should pop some photos in here, but that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, along with the, some some long days, a lot of walking on concrete, so that's the way it goes. So anyway, back on the purpose of this week's show, I got a call or got an email from a, 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 an industry colleague that I've known for years. He reached out to me and said, hey, I'm with a new company, and I got a product that might be worth talking about. What do you think? So we got together, we talked about it, and I said, yes, let's set up an interview. So Dave Brown, the company is Tive. And they provide small tracking devices for shipping things around the country, around the world, I guess. Uh, and, and they know where things are in real time in a precise moment, like within a couple of yards of where it actually should be. So, And I got to thinking, well, he said, you know, this was a great idea because it's not specifically used for the trade show world, but it could be. So one thing led to another, and now he's with uh, this company, Tive. And they are using this device to track trade show shipping and crates and things like that, which I think is going to open up a lot of doors and give a lot of people a good information. Anyway, had a great interview with Dave and it went like this. Well, it's been a while since we've had Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee, but what better way to get it back to the way it should be is welcoming Dave Brown of Tive. Dave, how are you doing today? I am doing excellent. And uh, Tim, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me on. And it's, uh, it's always great to talk to you. Well, I know you reached out to me a little while back about um, a company that you've been with a while with a new product that you were pretty excited about uh, that has to do with the trade show world. And I'm always curious to see how technology works in the trade show world, which is we, we talked about this last week about uh, how what this is. So let's dig into it. Uh, it's, it's a company called Tive, T-I-V-E. So what is Tive and what are you doing? I'm, I'm just going to sit back because I know you're just going to tell me this long story, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be concise and, and coherent for sure. So um, Tive's business is, is really is providing real-time visibility to shippers, brands, anybody who's moving freight assets around. Um, and it really focused very much on the supply chain. And, you know, if you think of the news the past 18 months or so, there has been a whole lot of of commentary about supply chain and the awareness, and really you know, kind of asking the question, where's my stuff? And the, the way I found Tive uh, was, was kind of having one of those moments and thoughts of from an exhibitor perspective or an exhibit house perspective, a carrier, anyone who's involved in the creation and execution of, of trade shows, there's quite often the moments of, wait a second, where is this or that? You know, you walk onto the show floor, you're expecting to see six crates and there's four there. Well, where are the other two? So it, it, I kind of had this epiphany one day about, you know, if we could quote unquote GPS track something, we could be able to see it on a map. You know, if I walked into the, into the show, I saw something wasn't there. Theoretically, I thought I pull my phone up. I can see a little dot, I can know where the asset is, I can find it and we move on. So I did some research and I found Tive who was way ahead of that simplistic thought that I had because they were already providing a service and a, a platform uh, to shippers really around the globe who were trying to keep an eye on not just the geolocation of items but also monitor the condition. Uh, mm -hmm. monitor, say, the temperature, uh, the humidity, uh, other factors to be able to give guidance as to where things are at, what is the condition, do they look like they're going to schedule on time, so on and so forth. So I was really excited of that there was a company that was so much further down the line in terms of my simplistic thinking. 
And when I reached out and spoke with them, uh, there was sort of an understanding from a business and a personal standpoint that trade shows can be a logistics uh, nightmare. Yes. You know, there's a lot of planning that's involved and you're kind of at times crossing your fingers that everything hits the mark on time. Uh, Ask me about my phone calls this week. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. They became just as interested in me as this is a very niche application, but it sort of epitomizes what the creation of the product line was to be able to give the various stakeholders uh, instant visibility as to where their items were and what was and what was the health, which is so. So, so why why is this new specifically to the trade show world? Obviously, shipping depending on what level of information a shipper or a, a client that's shipping the material uh, yep. wants to know. It's, it's out there. Certainly there are, there are companies that are doing this other than Hive. So why yes. is it not, why is it new to the trade show world? What, what kind of was your, you know, this, this would be a really good application. So where, where I'm going to define it as new is, is saying in the 31 years that I've been in the business, I had never heard of anywhere or any company having any sort of, asset-based tracking, mm -hmm. tracking of say, where is a truck or where is the carrier or a alert notices say from carriers like UPS or FedEx or, or any of the, the over the road carriers that did exist. But some of that quite frankly is driven by predictive analytics. So it might be, this is where we believe the asset is, or this is where we know the truck is but right. that didn't necessarily connect the dots to say this is where your stuff is. Right. So, I get it. I get a text that says your order from uh, Amazon or UPS is out for delivery. Correct. Um, that could be ten minutes, or it could be eight o'clock tonight. Correct. You know? So if you're right. I get the predictive analytics. I, I see what you're talking about, but this is different. This is where is it right now? Where right. we could we could we could pop into our platform. We could open up, a, say, a given tracker or maybe a shipment that is scheduled and see where everything is at this very moment. And then if there is anything positive or negative that occurs, um, we can be notified. So if we want to know that delivery has occurred, we can program in an ETA monitor that can be you know, the asset can enter into a geofenced area, a little, little map that we've, uh, or a little box we've drawn on the map. Tracker comes inside of that space. You get a text message that says that very thing. It has arrived at this point, but it's not predictive. It's real time. It's so real that time. transparency of real time is that's what's incredibly, incredibly important. It reminds me of what for instance, Apple's done in the last year or so with their tracking devices, AirPod, Air, what do they call them, AirPods or something like that, yep. where you can like, you, know, you put it on your phone or you put it on a device, your keys, you know, and, and you can, and, and they're using sort of a network of all other, you know, anonymous phones and Wi-Fi signals. How is the technology different from something like that? Um, and how, to, you know, is, is GPS, is it, I'm just curious, to, I don't want to get yep. too far into the weeds, but I'm just sure. curious a little bit to give me the overhead view of that. Yep. So at a high level, that type of, of uh, air tag is passive. It's passive technology that is dependent upon other devices being in the area that will allow you to see where that item is right now. But it doesn't provide you any sort of historical information or data to use after the fact. You know, for example, we had an account where um, the, the assets were uh, delivered, but then a freight bill came through and was showing a significant amount of wait time and a wait time charge. We were actually able to go back into the historical data to say, this is where the truck actually was or where the assets actually were at the time it was supposedly earning a weight charge. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't there, therefore that weight charge was waived. So the difference being is passive technology versus technology that we're able to then manipulate and be able to bring historical data as well as the whole component of, of alert. So the you know, since I've been doing this, a couple of major observations that I have is number one, it's really neat 
to kind of go into the platform and look at the map and see where the dots and where your things are moving about. Mm -hmm. But you really don't want any employees to be watching this like television. And with, <laughs> with a passive tag, you basically need to watch it like television to see how it moves about. Well, that sort of defeats the purpose of trying to free up uh, individuals' times. We want to be able to, yes, see where it is, but then also have information pushed to us that is going to be beneficial. You know, uh, something is idle for six hours and it's supposed to have been moving or, you know, it, it setup has already occurred. The crate's been buttoned up and it's gone to storage. And then it's realized, uh oh, the wrong graphic was set up. We need to get the crate to pull a graphic out. We can see now exactly where that is, the path and how it moved, and easily be able to go to go and find it. I'm curious, is, would, would this technology, if your familiarity with it, would, have, would this type of tracking been available five or 10 years ago? Or is this new enough to where we've gotten the technology to the point where a lot of the granular data, as you, as you mentioned, uh, is just now coming to bear? Or has it been, has the technology kind of been around for a while? Yeah, no, it is it is really just coming to bear in the past year or two. Um, so uh, Tive released uh, what is our uh, our five our solo 5G tracker the end of 2019. So it, it is utilizing technology that really was developed and implemented at this point. So um, I've come across a few prospects that have told me like, you know, I've looked for something like this in the past. I couldn't find anything but they were defining in the past as two and three years ago. And, right. and that's, that's accurate of the, the progression of technology. It, it wasn't there. Things like telematics to be able to track vehicles was there, but not breaking it down to the level of, of, the, of the asset that we're wanting to track. So this so, is all, it's really brand new. I'm curious about the, the device itself. Uh, if you could tell me a little bit about that, like what size is it? How is it powered? Yep. Uh, does it talk to a satellite? I mean, how, how does that actually Yeah, work? so the, the, the trackers themselves, we have a couple of different flavors, but I mentioned the Solo 5G. It's about the size of a deck of playing cards. So it's, it's fairly small. It is a battery powered device that is rechargeable. It, it has a has a battery life of about six months. And then to your question of how is it actually functioning, the primary mode of communication is cell triangulation. That's, that's always on. Right. But then we have the ability to turn on some proprietary Wi-Fi technology that we have, which functionally uh, the tracker will look and see a Wi-Fi signal in essence piggyback off of it to see the sky. And then there also is uh, GPS technology. So depending on the application and the need for accuracy or hyper accuracy, we can turn Wi-Fi and or GPS on and off um, at our leisure. So throughout something's journey, we might not, you know, if something's over the road going Chicago to Las Vegas, you know, accuracy can be defined as we need to know you know, within about a thousand yards of where something right. is in the convention center, we would like that to be 20, 25 feet. And then that's where we're at when we kick into the, to the GPS uh, uh, technology. So I'm curious with Tive and, and the people in it, I'm not sure how big of the, of the company is, but obviously you've got people that are really uh, looking at this technology and learning about it and seeing where it will go. Where do you guys think it will go in three to four or five years out? Are there more things you can add to it? Or is it just getting more refined? It is It is getting more and more refined. And because of the, the broad reach we have of working with uh, um, third-party shippers, direct shippers, um, global shippers, as well as brands all across the globe, um, we're getting a lot of different markets, uh, perspectives, and Tive currently, I think I was number roughly number seventy, employee seventy when I enjoy, when I joined the end of August last year, and we're around one hundred and thirty right now with uh, a number of open positions. So it's 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 in really rocket ship growth mode, very much driven by the supply chain challenges 
and then needs for in uh, what I'm going to say is our niche market of the exhibit world um, to meet the needs for, for our visibility. So to your question of where is it going, personally, I believe it, we're kind of what's at the front end of what could almost be called a trend the trend to be to be gaining the transparency and real-time visibility. I firmly believe 18 months, 24 months down the line, this is going to be the norm within the exhibit space that is a value to exhibitors, to the general contractors, to exhibit houses, to all of the parties involved, we're going to be utilizing this technology. You know, there was a point where the CNC machine and exhibit houses was that was new or the inkjet printer, that was new. That's all normal standard operating practice, uh, hardware technology that's used uh, for, for business efficiency. And I firmly believe we're going to see the same here, uh, as well as just the progression of what is the size of a deck of playing cards today? It could be the shipping label itself in three years. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm know. curious, is, the, is there a, a, a shippers, uh, exhibit houses, uh, exhibitors, which of those are the most receptive or the most obvious potential clients from your perspective? Sure. It's in different ways. It's all three. Um, I'll give a little example of at Exhibitor Live. Uh, we exhibited and um, we were entered in the, the buyer's choice uh, award category, which I'm very happy to say without uh, that we won the best new product award. But the point of this is as the judges came around and were asking questions, they spent about 30 minutes in our space. And what I realized was they were asking questions out of curiosity and relative to the contest that was being judged, but they were all asking questions relative to their primary business. So of the judges, we had conversations that were relative to their trade show programs as to how did they monitor and keep an eye on the assets but then also very much towards their primary business, whether it was keeping track of medical equipment, uh, paper. So it's it sort of branches out in, yeah. in a variety of different ways. Uh, with, with shippers, I've seen interest of, they want to know where the assets are just as much as the people who have contracted with them. You know, of because the question can be, how are we doing? Are we, is delivery looking good? Well, quite often some of the shippers are, they're wondering the same thing and they're looking to make a phone call to the driver, so on and so forth. And the driver's not available, isn't answering. Then this becomes a great replacement of a way to be able to quickly and promptly uh, be able to say, here's where we're at, we're looking good, so on and so forth. Or, you know, it happens of, no, there's a problem. We realized, X, Y, or Z has happened, uh, and, and, and here's the plan. Well, uh, I appreciate all this, Dave. This is great. So where's the best place to find Tive and to contact you? Yep. So I would say number one is, is check out our website, www.tive.com, or feel free to shoot me an email at dave.brown at tive.com. So T-I-V-E.com. Cool, Dave. I appreciate it. It's fun to learn about this, and I'm, I'm curious to see how this goes in the next uh, few years for you guys. Thanks Me for too. Spending time. All right. Me okay. too. I really find this is, is extremely exciting. Uh, I can tell you're excited about it. <laughs> yeah. And thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. It's always good to talk to you and uh, uh, look forward to the next time we chat. Thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Thanks again to Dave Brown of Tive and uh, for spending time here on Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. I don't know when we're going to have coffee again together, hopefully sooner rather than later. But it, I, I, honestly, it's going to be sort of a random thing for 2022 for the foreseeable future, I think. And that's just kind of the way this year is going in the last couple of years, right? I can't believe I actually did it way into 2020 before I decided to like pull back and then eventually put it on a hiatus for a while. So uh, I do want to finish it off with uh, this week's One Good Thing. There is a new book. Well, I think the book's been around a while, but there's a series out on, I believe, HBO Max called Station Eleven. And I had just gotten into the series. Actually, I started watching. I watched three or four episodes when I was in Anaheim uh, in the hotel room. And Station Eleven, kind of a science fiction thing, 20 years after, you know, like a pandemic sort of thing came through and wiped out a lot of the population, which is like, hey, okay. 
actually, this was published in, I think, 2015, and they started the series uh, a year or two ago. But uh, it's an interesting concept. It follows a group of Shakespearean actors who are touring the Midwest, up in Michigan, Wisconsin, that sort of thing, 20 years after a lot of the population has been wiped out and the world is just very different. And they kind of get... I haven't gotten to that part yet in either the book, because I started reading the book, and the TV series about where they face off against uh, some sort of religious cult or something. It looks really interesting. Anyway, that's this week's One Good Thing, Station Eleven. I think you'll like it. So until next time, you can find us at TradeShowGuyBlog.com, TradeShowGuyExhibits.com, and if you go to TradeShowGuy.net, that is kind of the jumping off point for the books and all the other blogs and, and, and websites that we have as well. Uh, this is Tim Patterson, Trade Show Guy. Thanks for checking it out.